Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today I'm going to discuss general principle of gastrointestinal function. The gastrointestinal system. The gastrointestinal system consists of the gastrointestinal tract, GIT and associated organ that provide secretions. The alimentary tract provide the body with a continual supply of water, electrolyte and nutrient. To achieve this, the gastrointestinal system requires these functions. The first one is motility. This refers to the movement of food through the digestive tract through the process of ingestion, which means taking food into the mouth. Mastication. Mastication, chewing the food and mixing it with saliva, deglutition, swallowing of food, peristalsis, rhythmic wave-like contraction that move food through the gastrointestinal tract, secretion. This include both exocrine and endocrine secretions. Our exocrine secretion include water, hydrochloric acid, bicarbonate and many digestive enzymes are secreted in, into the lumen of the gastrointestinal tract. The stomach alone, for example, secrete 2 to 3 liter of secretion per day. Endocrine secretion. The stomach and small intestine secrete a number of hormones that help to regulate the digestive system. Digestion. This refers to the breakdown of food molecule into their small subunit which can be absorbed. Absorption. This refers to the passage of digested end products into the blood or lumps. Circulation of blood through the gastrointestinal organ to carry away the absorbed substances. Storage and elimination. This refers to the temporary storage and subsequently elimination of indigestible food molecules. Cross section of the gastrointestinal wall. Cross section of the intestinal wall include the following layer from outer surface inward. From outer to inward, these are the layer of gastrointestinal tract. Outermost layer is the serosa. This is the outermost layer and it is called the serosa. The second layer is a longitudinal muscle layer. This is a second layer which is longitudinal muscle layer layer. The muscle layer consists of two types of muscle, longitudinal and circular. So one layer is longitudinal and the other layer is circular layer. The fourth layer is the submucosa. This is the submucosa is the fourth layer of gastrointestinal tract which is called the submucosa and it contains secretory glands and the mucosa. The innermost layer of the gastrointestinal tract is called mucosa which contains villi. This is a longitudinal view of the gastrointestinal tract. This is the outermost layer, the serosa. Here, this is, here it is, a cut is given to it. So, this is the outermost layer, serosa. This is the first muscular layer which travels transversely along the whole length of the gastrointestinal tract and they are called longitudinal muscle and the other muscular layer is circular which also runs circularly along the length of the gastrointestinal tract. Between these two muscles, the longitudinal and circular layer, there are neuronal plexus which are called myenteric plexus. These plexus are called myenteric plexus. Below the muscular layer and myenteric plexus is the submucosa which contain secretory glands and the innermost layer is the mucosa. 
which contain villi. GIT smooth muscle functions. The individual smooth muscle fiber in the gastrointestinal tract are 200 to 500 micrometer in length and 2 to 10 micrometer in diameter and they are arranged in bundle of as many as 1000 parallel fibers. In the longitudinal muscle layer, the bundles extend longitudinally down the intestinal tract in the circular muscle layer they extend around the gut. Within each bundle, the muscle fiber are electrically connected with one and other through large number of gap junction. Gap junction is a junction through which there is pre-moment of iron from pre-moments of iron bidirectionally and they allow low resistance moment of iron from one muscle cell to the next. Therefore, electrical signal that initiate muscle contraction can travel rapidly from one fiber to the next within each bundle but more rapidly along the length of the bundle than sideways. Electrical activity of the gastrointestinal smooth muscle. The smooth muscle of the gastrointestinal tract is excited by almost continuously slow and transient electrical activity along the membrane of the muscle fibers. This activity has two basic type of electrical waves, slow waves and spikes. Slow wave. Most gastrointestinal contraction occur rhythmically and this rhythm is determined mainly by the frequency of so-called slow wave or, sm or smooth muscle membrane potential. These waves are not action potential, instead they are slow undulating changes in the resting membrane potential. Here are small waves, undulating waves and they are not generated by the actual action potential but they are generated by undulant change in the resting membrane potential. Slow waves. Their intensity usually vary between 5 and 15 millivolt. The intensity of these waves are 5 to 15 millivolt and their frequency range in different part of the gastrointestinal tract from 3 to 12 per minute. They occur 3 to 12 impulses per minute in various part of the gastrointestinal tract. About 3 in the body of stomach as much as 12 in the duodenum and about 8 or 9 in the terminal ileum. Spike potentials. The spike potential are true action potentials that occur automatically when resting membrane potential of the gastrointestinal smooth muscle become more positive than above minus 40 millivolt. The normal resting membrane potential in the smooth muscle fiber of the gut is between minus 50 and minus 60 millivolt. Thus, each time the peak of the slow wave temporarily become more positive than minus 40 millivolt spike potential appear on these peaks. When the action potential reach minus 40 millivolt, then spikes occurs. The higher the slow wave potential rise, the greater the frequency of spike potential, usually ranging between 1 and 10 spike per second. The spike potential lasts 10 to 40 minutes as long in gastrointestinal muscle as the action potential in large nerve fiber each gastrointestinal spike lasts as long as 10 to 20 millisecond. Cell of Kajal Cells of Kajal 
द प्रीशियस कास अप लो वेव इज नॉट कंप्लीटली अंडरस्टूड ऑल दो दे अवेयर टू बी कॉज बाई कॉम्प्लेक्स इंटरेक्शन अमोंग द स्मूथ मसल सेल एंड स्पेशलाइज सेल खॉल द इंटरस्टिशियल सेल अब कजाल देट आर बिलीव टू एक्ट एज एलेक्ट्रिकल पेस मेकर पार स्मूथ मसल सेल सेल अब कजाल वर डिस्कवर बाई खजाल सर खजाल ही वॉज अ स्पाइनिश न्यूरो साइंटिस्ट दिस इंटस्टिशियल सेल फॉर्म ए नेटवर्क दीज आर द सेल अब कजाल एंड दीज आर स्मूथ मसल ऑफ द गेस्ट्रो इंटेस्टाइनल ट्रैक एंड दी सेल एंटरपोज विद द स्मूथ मसल ऑफ द गेस्ट्रो इंटेस्टाइनल ट्रैक द इंटस्टिशियल सेल अब कजाल अंडर गो साइक्लिक चेंज इन मेम्ब्रेन पोटेंशियल ड्यू टू यूनिक आइन चैनल देट पीरियोडिकली ओपन एंड प्रोड्यूस इनवर्ड पेस मेकर करंट डेट में जनरेट स्लो वेव एक्टिविटी द स्लो वेव यूजली डू नाट बाई दैम सेल कॉज मच कंट्रेक्शन इन मोस्ट पार्ट ऑफ द गेस्ट्रो इंटेस्टाइनल ट्रैक एक्सेप्ट पर हैव्स इन द स्टमक they mainly excite the appearance of spike potential instead they mainly excite the appearance of intermediate spike potential and the spike potential in turn actually excite the muscle contraction action potential in the gastrointestinal smooth muscle in nerve fiber the action potential are caused almost by rapid entry of sodium ion through the sodium channel to the interior of the fiber in gi smooth muscle fiber large number of calcium jt smooth muscle fiber large number of calcium ion enter along with smaller number of sodium ion and therefore are called calcium sodium channels these channel are much slower to open and close the slowness of no opening and closing of the calcium sodium channel account for long duration of the action potential in the smooth muscle of gastrointestinal tract in large nerve muscle fiber the action potential generate quickly and disappear quickly but in smooth muscle of the gastrointestinal tract the duration of action potential is prolonged tonic contraction of some gastrointestinal smooth muscles tonic contraction is continuous not associated with basic electrical rhythm of slow wave but often lasting several minute or even hours the tonic contraction often increase or decrease in intensity but continues tonic contraction is sometime caused by continuous repetitive spike potential the greater the frequency the greater the degree of contraction at other time tonic contraction is caused by hormone or other factor that bring about contraction partial depolarization of smooth muscle membrane without causing action potential a third cause of tonic contraction is continuous entry of calcium ion into the interior of the cell brought brought about in way not associated with changes in membrane potential this description you can watch in the enteric nervous system the gastrointestinal tract has a nervous system all its own called the enteric nervous system the gastrointestinal the gastrointestinal system has its own nervous system which is called the enteric nervous system it lies entirely in the wall of the gut beginning in the esophagus and ending all the way to the anus the number of neuron in this enteric system is about 100 about 
million almost exactly equal to the number in the entire spinal cord. This highly developed enteric nervous system is especially important in controlling gastrointestinal movement and secretion. The enteric nervous system the enteric nervous system is composed mainly of two plexus. The first one is an outer plexus lining between the longitudinal and circular muscle layer called the myenteric plexus or orbex plexus. The myenteric plexus are located between the longitudinal and circular layer of muscle and are called myenteric or orbic plexus. The second type is an inner plexus called the submucosal plexus or miser plexus. They lie in the submucosa. Here, this is the submucosa and they lie in the submucosa. They are called submucosal plexus. The myenteric plexus control mainly the gastrointestinal movement. Myenteric M, M power, movement of the muscles and the submucosal plexus control mainly gastrointestinal secretions and local blood flow. So S is power secretion, M is power movement and S is power secretion, myenteric and submucosal plexus. Difference between the myenteric and submucosal plexus. The myenteric plexus consists mostly of linear chain of many interconnected neurons that extend the entire length of the gastrointestinal tract. These are interconnected neurons which are arranged in linear fashion and they are formed along the whole length of the gastrointestinal tract. When the plexus is stimulated, its principal effects are they increase tonic contraction or tone of the gut wall and the second function is increase intensity of the rhythmical contractions. The third function is slightly increase rate of rhythm of contraction and the fourth function is increase velocity of conduction of excitatory wave along the gut wall causing more rapid movement of the gut peristaltic waves. The myenteric plexus are not entirely excitatory, some of its neurons are inhibitory. Their fiber ending secrete an inhibitory transmitter possibly vasoactive intestinal peptide or some other inhibitory peptides. The resulting inhibitory signals are especially useful for inhibiting some of the intestinal sphincter muscle, sphincter muscle that impose movement of food along successive segment of the gastrointestinal such as the pyloric sphincter which control emptying of the stomach into the duodenum and the sphincter of the ileocecal well which control emptying from the small intestine into the cecum. Submucosal plexus. The submucosal plexus in contrast to the myenteric plexus is mainly concerned with controlling function within the inner wall of each minute segment of intestine. Sensory signal originate from the gastrointestinal epithelium and are then integrated in the submucosal plexus to help control local intestinal secretion, local absorption and local contraction of the submucosal muscle that cause various degree of infolding of the gastrointestinal tract. These are the sensory plexus which originate from the submucosa. They integrate with the submucosal plexus and the myenteric plexus and also send 
information or signal to the higher center. They, here they cause secretion and movement of the gastrointestinal tract. Thank you. Please subscribe the channel. Press the bell icon for upcoming notification and add your valuable comment in the comment box for the improvement of the channel and please also like the channel.